Alrighty. Hi, boys and girls. Um, we're going to be reading this story for your test today. Remember that the story is a realistic fiction, so it means it's made up, but we're going to be listening to it today. Um, it's Experts Incorporated. So remember, we're reading about this boy Rodney and his best friend Lucas. All right, let's go ahead and listen to it. There are three things in this world I can't stand. Cucumber salad, wool sweaters, and creative writing. Cucumbers make me burp, Ooh. and wool makes me itch. But if you gave me a choice, I would rather burp and itch at the same time than have to write something creative. You finished your essay, right, Rado? My friend Lucas asked me as we walked towards school together early one morning. I hesitated. Lucas is my best friend, and we always shoot straight with each other. Yeah, I finished it, I said. Phew, that's a relief, he said. If you hadn't, I would never forgive you, you know. Yeah, I know, I said. The problem began on the first day of the school year, when our humanities teacher, Mrs. Greenberg, promised that if nobody got an F in her class all semester, she would give us a pizza party. Just remember, she'd laughed, there are no F's in pizza. Here it was the last week of the semester, and I was about to earn not just an F, but the F that would ruin everything. Because you see, I hadn't done the assignment. Not one word of it. Things I can't. Uh-oh. All right, so no pizza party so far if he doesn't write this paper. Let's go ahead and listen on. As we rounded the corner and headed up the block toward school, Jeremy and Russell, two friends from our class, caught up with us. You guys did the assignment, right? Russell asked us. Yep, Lucas answered for us both. How about you? Of course, said Jeremy. What do we look like, idiots? I can taste that pepperoni already. Last year's class got the party, and somebody told me she let them have all the soda they wanted, too. When I get nervous, I sometimes get hives on my neck, and I could feel one beginning to prickle up under my collar. Uh -oh. Huge hive growing on my uh -oh. neck. So when he gets nervous and he's lying, he gets one of those huge hives. What profession did you pick? Lucas asked. Doctor, Jeremy said, because they get to save people and stuff. I pick truck driver, said Russell. They get to travel and eat at diners. I love diners. But my mom says they're too greasy, so we never get to go. What about you, Lucas? Star pitcher for the New York Yankees, he said. Man, can you imagine getting paid to play baseball? The assignment had been to write an essay about what you want to be when you grow up. Sounds easy enough, unless you're like me and have no idea what you want to be. And no matter how hard you try, you can't think of even one thing that feels the least bit right. I bet all the girls are going to say they want to be teachers, because they know Mrs. Greenberg will eat that up with a spoon, Russell said with disgust. Yeah, probably, Lucas agreed. So what did you pick, Rado? he asked, turning to me. We were just starting up the steps of the school when a familiar cry went up from the playground. Hey, look, everybody. There goes Mucus. Hey, Mucus. Lucas blushed and hung his head as we walked up the steps and into the building. It happens to him all the time, poor guy. He has one of the worst names. Not only does Lucas rhyme with Mucus, but even if you shorten it to Luke, you're still in trouble because then it rhymes with puke. He's been tortured his whole life on account of that name, Lucas. Guess what his name rhymes with? Aww, poor Lucas. Having a bad name is something Lucas and I have in common, and probably part of the reason we became friends all the way back on the first day of kindergarten. My name is Rodney Curtin. My parents and my teachers call me Rod. My friends call me Rado. And my sister, who's only two, calls me Ra-Ra. Rodney Curtin may not be the greatest name in the world, but frontward like that, it's not so bad. 
The thing is, at school, when they call out your name for attendance, they say it backwards. Lucas Bromberg becomes Bromberg Lucas. Samantha Smith becomes Smith Samantha. Unfortunately, I become Curtain Rod. That's bad. As we made our way down the hall to homeroom, I felt sorry for Lucas on account of the teasing, but secretly I was relieved that he'd forgotten about the question he'd asked me. How was he going to take it when he found out I hadn't done the assignment? After she took attendance, Mrs. Greenberg, we have her for homeroom, as well as humanities, announced that she will be collecting our papers after lunch. There was still hope left. All I had to do was come up with an idea between now and then, scribble it down in time to hand it in with the others, and maybe I wouldn't have to ruin the party after all. The problem was, I still didn't have any ideas. Uh-oh, I wonder how this problem gets solved. What do I want to be? I asked myself. Come on, Curtin, think. I thought about it during math history, and science lab. But with lunchtime only minutes away, my mind was still a complete blank. The only thing I could think of that I wanted to be was someone else, someone who had written the stupid essay already. As I looked around the room desperately, hoping to find some inspiration somewhere, I asked myself, do I want to be a scientist? Do I want to fix clocks, write books, build desks? make pencils. No, no, no. And then suddenly, without warning, everything shifted into slow motion as my eyes came to rest on the face of the girl sitting in the second seat in the third row from the left. That's when it hit me. I knew what I wanted to be, what the world needed me to be. When the bell for lunch rang, I didn't join the others in the cafeteria. Instead, I took out my notebook and began to write. When the fifth period bell rang, I was already in my seat in Mrs. Greenberg's room with a stack of four handwritten sheets of paper in front of me and a huge grin on my face. Pencil maker? Sweat. Okay. Why are you sitting there smiling like a dork? Lucas asked as he slid into the seat next to me. And where were you at lunch, anyway? And another thing, you never answered my question from before. What did you choose as your profession? Name expert, I told him happily. That's definitely what I want to be, a name expert. A name expert? Who ever heard of that, he said. Nobody. It hasn't been invented yet. But I'm going to be the first one, I told him. Oh, yeah? And what exactly are you going to do, he asked me. I'm going to advise people about what not to name their kids. No offense, but that is so dumb. Why would anybody pay you to tell them what not to name their kid, he asked. Because I'm an expert, I said. Says who, he said. What's your name? What do you mean, what's my name? You know my name, fish for brains. Lucas snorted. Come on, just answer the question. What's your name? Lucas, he said. And what do all the kids call you? He hesitated uncomfortably for a second before answering. Mucus, he said quietly. Exactly, I said. See, if I had been around when your parents were deciding what to name you, I could have warned them that every name needs to be checked for bad rhymes. A kid named Leo is going to end up getting called B.O. And anybody named Gabby is going to get called Flabby. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Your name is particularly bad because it's a double whammy. I'm an expert. All right. Tell me about it, said Lucas, shaking his head sadly. The way I see it, a name expert should be hired every time a baby gets born to protect it from being saddled with a name that could ruin its life, I went on. How much do you think you'll get paid, he asked. A lot. Parents pay a bundle for braces to straighten their kids' teeth. 
Don't you think they'd shell out even more to save their kids from being humiliated at school? Here's a question for you. Do you think there's any way a name expert could figure out whether a name is going to fit when a kid gets older? Lucas asked me. What do you mean, I said. Well, for instance, you know how Melody Adams is tone deaf? Yeah, she sings like a moose, I said. If her parents had known she was going to be unmusical, maybe they wouldn't have given her a musical name like Melody. Maybe they would have named her Moose, I said. We both laughed. All right, you guys, that ends our story. Go ahead and finish taking your test today, and good luck. <laughs>